Welcome back to a guide to pen testing. In this episode, we're going to be covering how to install Ubuntu Server 16.04.1 LTS as an application server. The first thing we're going to need is the ISO file from the Ubuntu website. The link for this will be down in the description. So now that we have that downloaded, we can go ahead and create a new virtual machine. So let's open up VirtualBox. For this episode, the only virtual machine we're going to need booted up for the time being is the PFSense machine we created in a previous video. Now that the PFSense virtual machine is booted, we can go ahead and create a new virtual machine. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to be setting up Ubuntu 16.04, so let's create a name to suit that. In this case, VirtualBox has filled out the rest of this automatically for us. If yours doesn't, just copy what you see on screen here. We're going to go ahead and continue with 1GB of RAM. This isn't going to be running a lot of traffic, so 1GB should be perfectly fine for our needs. We're going to create a new virtual hard disk. We're going to keep the default option of VDI. We want to use dynamically allocated so that it doesn't use up more space than it's actually using on our disk. In this case, we're going to increase the disk size just slightly so that we have enough room to install everything we need. I've gone ahead and double mine to 16. You can go ahead and set yours to whatever you think is necessary. As we selected dynamically allocated before, it's not going to actually use this much space unless we actually install 16 gigabytes of data into the virtual machine. We can go ahead and boot this up now and we'll be prompted to select an ISO to boot from. I'm going to select the ISO that I downloaded earlier and hit start. For these options, you just select whatever is appropriate to you. For me, I'm going to select English and then I'm going to select install Ubuntu server. Select English again and United Kingdom. I want to automatically detect the keyboard layout, so I'm going to hit yes here. Then it's going to ask me to hit one of the keys to auto detect my keyboard. So I'm going to hit Y and then W. And then it's going to ask a series of questions to try and work out what type of keyboard I have. In this case, I do have a pound symbol, so I'm going to hit yes on this. And it's correctly selected my keyboard layout as GB. So now it's going to ask us for a host name. I'm just going to name mine application server. Here we just fill it out appropriate to you. I'm going to fill out my name and a password that I'm going to remember. You do the same for your machine. If this was our personal machine, we would probably go ahead and encrypt our home directory. Because it's just for the sake of our lab, we don't need to do this. I'm going to select yes here because it's correctly identified the time zone. I'm going to select the default option to use the entire disk and set up LVM. And I'm going to select the one disk that's available. And then I'm going to confirm the changes to write to the disk. And then I'm going to confirm it one more time. Network, we don't have a HTTP proxy to access the internet, so we don't need to set anything here. In this case, we don't want any automatic security updates. We want this system to be intentionally vulnerable, so we don't want software being patched when we intentionally want it to be vulnerable. On this screen, we're only going to select one option, the OpenSSH server. To select things on this menu, you use the space bar. Enter is to continue onto the next screen. Our final task of this installer is to install Grub to the master boot record of our hard drive. Here we're just going to select yes. Grub is a bootloader that allows us to actually boot into the operating system. Without this, we wouldn't be able to boot into the Ubuntu server system. So now that the installation is complete, before we hit continue to reboot, we're going to make one change to the virtual machine. To right click on the network icon in the bottom right hand corner of this window, then we're going to go to network settings. Next we're going to add this to the internal network we created in the starting episodes of this series. Now we have that complete, we can hit continue and let the system boot. Now the system's booted, we can go ahead and log in with the credentials we created earlier. So there's a few checks we're going to do first to make sure that this system can access the internet. Firstly, we're going to run ifconfig so that we can check that we've got an IP address. In this case we do and it's in the correct range we set in the pfSense machine. So now that we know we have an IP address in the correct range, we're going to go ahead and ping Google so that we can ensure we've got connectivity. 
As you can see on screen, we can ping Google, therefore we should be able to continue with the rest of this video. We're going to install a number of packages that are going to turn this Ubuntu server system into an application server. We're going to be installing Nginx, PHP and MySQL. We're going to be prompted for our password again as we need to run this as administrator. We're going to hit Y here to confirm the installation of all these packages. Here we need to set a root password for MySQL. Ordinarily you'd set a ridiculously strong password, but for our cases we just need to make it memorable. So all of those packages are installed now, but there's still some final steps we need to take to finally configure this. I've gone ahead and booted up another one of the virtual machines that we set up earlier in this series. This virtual machine is inside of the internal network, so we can check that the Nginx server is running from the internal network. So I simply browse the IP address of the server we've just set up, and you, as you can see here, we get an Nginx welcome page. In order to enable PHP inside of Nginx, we need to make a change to one of the config files. So we need to run nano at root in order to edit the file that's shown here. Luckily there's already some really useful comments inside of this file so all we have to do is uncomment some lines and PHP will work for us. You should edit your config file so that it matches the one on the screen. Now we're going to use Control X, Y and Enter to save and close. So now that we have the config file saved, we're going to restart Nginx. The final thing we need to do is create a PHP file inside of the web directory and test that PHP works. Create a file in the web directory shown and enter the same thing you see on screen here. Again we're going to save this. And what we can do now is go back to our other Windows host and check that this file works. So now if we browse to the same IP address but append index.php to the end of the URL, we successfully see the PHP info file. So now we complete 